And so today we're going to jump right into the book of Matthew. I am certain that if you are reading along, I pray that this screen here is large enough for you to actually be able to read it. If not, we're reading out of the New American Standard Version today. And we're starting at Matthew chapter 1, kind of with a goal of reading through the bulk of the New Testament this year. Uh, chapter, maybe two chapters at a time. We will be starting off with just a single chapter. Starting here, Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 1. It goes like this. An account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abram, he was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was the father of Jacob, and Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. And Judah, the father of Perez, and Zariah, and Tamar, and Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Aram, Aram, the father of Abinabab, Abinabab, the father of Nashon, Nashon, the father of Salmon, and Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed, named the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of of King David. We'll stop for just a second. Uh, this may just seem like um, a whole lot of lists of names. Obviously, we are leading up to the genealogy of Christ to show his background and where he came from and that he was indeed the line of David. Now, this uh, becomes much more important later when we start looking at uh, how he has fulfilled uh, the prophecies that he had to be of the right line, but at the same time, he also had to be a priest. Uh, can't really be both, right? You're either the kingly line or the priestly line, uh, and Christ crosses over. And part of it is because of this genealogy. So let, let's continue. Uh, 6b. And David was the father of Solomon uh, by the wife Uriah, and Solomon the father of Reboam, Reboam the father of that guy there, and that guy there the father of Asaph. Asap, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, and Joram, the father of Uzzah. Uzzah was the father of Jotham, and Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, who's going to be important later as well, and Hezekiah, the father of Messiah. Messiah, the father of Amos, Amos, the father of Josiah, Josiah, the father of Jehonakim, and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. Here again, we see this now put in not only lineage, but also time and space, right? You can go back and look historically at exactly uh, when that was and what was going on with the nation. All of this uh, is important when you get into a deeper study. Verse 12. And after the deportation to Babylon, uh, Jehoiakim, the father of Sileth, Sileth, the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the father of Abinabab, Abinabab, the father of Elikim, Elikim, the father of Azor, Azor to Zaduk, and Zaduk, the father of Achim. Now, Achim was the father of Ulid. Uliad was the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Mathan, Mathan the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph. Ah, we're getting into names you know, right? And Joseph the father of Mary, of whom Jesus was born and is called the Messiah. So there we go. We go all the way here um, from uh, Abraham all the way down to Christ himself, right? Well, directly through Mary and Joe. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David to the deportation of Babylon, 14 more generations. And from that deportation of Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah, verse 18, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph was a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace. Plan to dismiss her quietly, right? Uh, which kind of makes sense. Um, if you really care about this person making a big public scene, uh, well, it's against the law to have sex outside of marriage or prior to marriage, of course, and this could have been very bad for her. There really would have been only two choices for Mary. One is to go to the temple and take her punishment, um, which depending on exactly the temperament of the day, uh, more than likely would have meant uh, a stoning, 
we think of stoning today as um, actually murder. That's not really the case. That's not how the law worked. They would throw stones until the person quit moving, basically knocked unconscious. Then they would just leave. That person would either recover and live or would die, kind of leaving it in the hands of God. So that was one choice. The second was to hand her back to her folks. Now, if you hand her back to the folks, if they were wealthy or in a place where they could take care of her, she could work the farm or milk cows or, or whatnot. But if they weren't, that would mean she would have to go on the street and make a living the only way a woman could at that time. So actually, Joseph putting her away quietly uh, was in a lot of ways kind of an admirable thing to do, kind of sucking up his own pride and just trying to get past it and let her have a life. Uh, so that's what he planned to do. But just as when he resolved to do this, this angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joe, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll bear a son, and you're to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place, the fulfillment had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Now, just like we started, the reason we went through uh, the whole genealogy is because it all has to line up with prophecy. So here is one more thing that is lining up with prophecy, that this birth would be announced and that it would be uh, the father would be the Holy Spirit and the mother uh, would, of course, be a virgin. And here we have that happening. And this was the statement, verse 23. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joe then woke up from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, took his wife, but he had no marital relations with her until, until she bore a son. And he named him Jesus. A couple important things to note here. Uh, the first of which is that Joseph immediately followed uh, what he'd been instructed to do, right? This angel came to him. He said, yeah, I'm in. I'll do that. The second thing that I think we need to note is that he did not sleep with her, did not have sex with her until after the child was born. Um, there is a lot made of Mary staying holy forever, right right up until the cross. And a lot of people equate that with sexual relations with Joe. Um, clearly from verse 25, that is not the case. They had a regular husband and wife relationship after that. Well, if you're with us in the chat, that does bring us to the end of our reading for today. If you want to drop a prayer request in the chat room at any point, uh, I will, of course, stop and pray for you. But we're going to close with a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump into our movie for the day. Uh, we're doing a voyage to the prehistoric planet. Uh, 19, what is it, 1963, I believe. So this, uh, well... I think it'll prove to be a good time. Let's go ahead and pray together. Lord God, we thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for the fact that we can read through a story like this and realize fully that this is you reaching into our world, not because we were worth it, but because you loved us that much. And that really does mean the world, God. I just pray for each and every person that happens to be listening to this, that you will greatly bless them this week. Lead us in a closer walk with you. We thank you in advance for loving us even when we constantly let you down. In the name of Jesus, amen.